I think for me, the Miami River was a very important part of my development. And for a lot of boys, Miami River was a place to, to fish and a place if you felt uh, dangerous uh, to, to swim. And the, it was that for me as well, but uh, I began to uncover on the banks of the river a very important part of the area's history. And I did it in a very innocent way, as any child would, and beginning to realize there were actually artifacts located along the river. And by the time I was in my teens, I was working at the mouth of the Miami River, actually looking at Indian mounds and some of the prehistoric sites, particularly at, at the Brickell site, where the old Brickell house was located. And my friend and I, uh, my friend Mark Green, would actually go beneath the Brickell house uh, while it was still standing, and we would find uh, dozens of artifacts from the old trading posts that were, uh, had been lost or discarded there. So for us, the Miami River was the beginning of a personal excavation, a personal discovery of what really motivated me, which was a curiosity about the past and a defining of a sense of place that had never been provided when I was in the schools of Miami at that time. The white settler who was living on the Miami River in the mid to late 19th century had the best of, uh, and the worst, of, of uh, both worlds. That is the world of tropical paradise that came with all its mosquitoes and sand flies, uh, with all of the inconveniences of, of, the, of the heat of the summer, but at the same time with the very wondrous beauty of this intense green forest of the place where the sea and the land and the, and the sky all met together at the mouth of the river. It was really a very beautiful place that was spoken well of by early explorers and by the first visitors coming to the mouth of the river. So in that sense, they certainly had a, a wonderful place to live. And it's worth noting that the beginnings of tourism in Miami were completely focused on the Miami River. Tourism evolved around attractions such as Musa Isle, Coppingers and also the lookout, the Everglades lookout that was located at the headwaters of the river. And that was enough for a thriving industry of boat tours to actually go up and down the river from the Royal Palm Hotel to the head of the river every day uh, as part of the uh, tourism of going back to the very early 1900s right up through the uh, 1930s and 40s. So the river was always part of that tourist tapestry and it lost its value as it became more and more a working river, more and more bridges being built and eventually Miami Beach really surpassing uh, tourism.